Welcome back club members. In this month's edition, we are looking at regional identity. I'm joined with my lovely co-host, Kyla. Hi, Kiri. Hey, how you doing? Very well. Excellent. Um, I'm gonna tell our viewers a little bit about what we're covering this month. Yeah. So we've picked two awesome producers, uh, Mr. Pierre Payard and La Côte Gobillon to look at their zones. Their sub and their, Yeah, we're gonna look at the village where they're both from and show what they do really well, which is expressing it in the best possible way in the wines that we're doing this so month. So we're, we're really looking at a sense of place and, and two very specific vineyard sites, or should I say villages? We're a little broader village. than that, aren't we? We are village, we are, we and are then crew. vineyards are sort of expressed within the village. Yes. Now, for many, many generations, if you've been drinking Grand Marks or big brands, then you've been drinking champagnes that have really been blended from across the region. So fruit from everywhere around that 34,000 hectares of, of land in Champagne. More commonly these days, we are looking at um, growers and smaller producers who are very much focused on a sense of place being the vineyards that they own and showing an expression of a village or, or a sub-region. That's right. They're getting very zonal. They're getting very are specific with sight. They're almost Burgundian in their approach. Mm. Uh, a lot of Burgundy is very much that way. So it's super, super exciting time, as we've mentioned probably before in Champagne. Yeah. And so these guys are doing an exceptional job of showing that. We are going to be in the Montagne de Rans and we are looking at Bouzy versus Ecoy. So our first producer for you this month is Pierre Payard. And I have to say... We love these guys. We love these guys. Um, we've got eight generations of family. That's ridiculous, yeah. That's a lot of history. It's going I mean, back it, to like 18th century. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a long time. So you could say that their knowledge of the particular parcels within their, um, their crew are very, very intense. They're very specific. Yeah. There's 25 individual parcels of land that have been outlined within the village of Boozy, which I love as a name. Um, in the Montagne de Rams, and this particular house used 22 of those parcels. Mm. And in fact, this wine, Le Parcelle, they used 22 parcels or, or sub terroirs of the village in this particular cuvee. So we're really getting yeah. a great expression of the village of Boozy. Yep. Yeah. So if you want to know what Boozy tastes like, grab a bottle of this. Um, and that's, that's why I thought we'd put it in this month and show you exactly what these guys are doing. Uh, there's some really interesting things happening with the wine, and I think as as a whole, they've they've really come a long way in their in their wine production, their techniques. Totally. So you've got Pierre Payard, and then you've got the the two sons of Pierre, um, Antoine and Quinton. Mm. I mean, the last time I was in the vineyard in 2016, um, it was very clear that the the gentlemen are staunchly organic in their approach. So no herbicides, yeah. no pesticides. Really, really um, vivacious growth throughout the vineyards, but when I was there in 2016, they'd had that wicked combination of hail and wet, followed by um, yeah, got, mildew and rot. That's right, so, yeah. You know, n not, not a beautiful looking vineyard in certain parts of 2016 and 2017 with some of those issues, but um, showing you that they are definitely an organic grower. So you've got a lot of expression in the wines. I think the wines are really classy. Yeah. You've got this beautiful combination of power, which is what Boozy Pinot Noir is really famed for. They specialise in the Pinot Noir fruit, so you've got power. But this particular house, slightly deeper cellar, constant temperature of, of 10 degrees, extra ageing, so you've got this finesse and this real class. Super fine bead. As you, when you pick it up and you open your wines this month, pour it in your glass and let it set for at least like 30 seconds or so, and then just watch the bead from the base of your flute and see how fine it is. It's just like... Uh, just a little flow of bubbles. So with this Cuvée Le Parcel, we have 70% Pinot Noir, 30% Chardonnay. The family only work with the two noble grapes in the region. There's no Meunier planted in their, in their vineyards. Mm -hmm. We have an extra brood at 2.7 grams of sugar per litre. So the presence of the acidity is certainly felt in the wine. Yeah, and look, across the board, they're all extra brute, their wines. I think they've always been that way, yeah. really try and express their 
areas Sensitized. and not covering it with too much sugar, which which I totally respect as a winemaker side of things. And it's good because you've got that four years of aging in the cellar. And God, I've got to say that it, an extra year goes a long way, doesn't it? Huge. It makes a big difference to the finesse of the wine and yeah. even some of the secondary characteristics. So when I put my nose in this wine, you've got this... You've got this movement between some secondary or tertiary notes of the Chardonnay, so you've got it much more, none of that fresh citrus, citrus notes, you've really got this um, uh, butter and bread and, and croissant and some hazelnut and this real roundness and, and a lovely suppleness from the Chardonnay, but you've got this powerful Pinot Noir fruit as well. So you've got a real balance of play between these real juicy red fruit flavours yeah. and this beautiful elegance of the Chardonnay. They've they really, got that They really nailed. make themselves felt and shown in the wine. I think the extra ageing helps marry uh, the, the parcels really well, the fruit really well, and you don't really need much else apart from that. Just solid winemaking. It, it, it is really good winemaking, and the wine's perfectly integrated, and you've got this beautiful um, length that's beautifully poised on the palate. It's the, the talented boys. I have to say, this is an excellent wine. You've got the base of 2013, which yes. is being signalled on the front of the bottles in the Roman numerals. Hint, you've, hint. You've got some reserve wine from the excellent 2012 vintage and then you've got a very small parcel of fruit um, reserve wines coming from 2004, 2004 so yep. really ripe very luscious um, but they've nailed it I think it's an exceptional wine so next up is the house of La Corte Gobillon and uh, I was very fortunate enough yeah. to meet uh, both Geraldine and Richard uh, from the house uh, this, this year when I was in um, Champagne. And a uh, really dynamic couple doing some excellent things, very proud of their region mm. um, and took over the family business in 2006 from their parents who started it back in two th uh, sorry, 1947. Yeah, just post World War II actually. You know, of all the things to do, it's like, all right, we're heading back home, we're gonna set up shop, uh, you know, working the land. So mm. uh, Geraldine's father was very focused on viticulture from way back when. Their first harvest was back in 68. Mm. Uh, and they already had uh, people lining up to buy their, their champagne, so mm. they were doing very well. A good local following. Good local following, and they continued this passion into their uh, farming today, which is all organic. Yeah. Uh, it's about 20 acres, uh, thereabouts. And what you see in this wine is actually representative of the uh, parcels that they own. So it's 85% Pinot Noir and 15% Chardonnay. Okay. So a little bit about this wine. Uh, Ekoi, really interesting region. Uh, there are 17 different parcels that go into this particular wine. They've got a combination of both sand and clay underneath both sort of shallow and deep chalk. Uh, so what you're getting is not your typical Pinot Noir characteristics like in the Pierre Payard, which was lots of red fruit and some of that yellow fruit. This is predominantly yellow fruit. It's softer, it's got some lovely toasty notes as well. Um, it's got a bit of a tang to it, doesn't it? You it know, does. I think, for me, it's, it's quite perfumed. It's almost a tinge floral, but mm. it's a completely different profile. You know, from being in the Montagne du Rhum, the Boozy versus the Ecoy, this is a, a little lighter, it's a little bit more fruit forward, it's a little bit more floral, it's got some more freshness. Yeah. It's a different profile on the palate. And, and you're right, and I think when we're looking at Pinot Noir dominant champagnes, if that's what you're into and you, you like, you'll note that different areas actually express Pinot Noir in a different way. And it's uh, picking up on those nuances, if you like, is really what it's about when it comes to tasting the champagne. So and I think that's interesting. I mean, look, we yeah. for so many years we drank champagne that was just blended across the region. To really look at these sub tours, they've got quite a bit of character. And it's he nice heaps, to see it. Heaps. And I, and I think, you know, per, uh, you know, as personalities go, you get on well with some people more than you get on with others. Same with champagne. Good winemaking. Yeah. Just slightly less than um, three years in the cellar on this wine. So yeah, so 30 months on lease. Yeah. Um, uh, six grams dosage. Mm -hmm. the, the vines age around 30 years. So nice maturity compared to 25 with Pierre Payard. And um, look, organic approach, as I mentioned before, yeah. and, and a really lovely expressive wine. Uh, soft on the palate and, and, a, and a lovely acid to carry it through. So I hope that you enjoyed the champagnes for this month. I think that zooming in on particular terroirs within the Champagne region is super interesting. Yeah. You know, and I really hope that people are finally starting to get their training wheels off and starting to explore some of the smaller producers within the region and move away from this 
you know, big blend of the taste of champagne. Yeah, and look, in saying that, there, there is masterful blending going on amongst the other houses that Agreed. do more of a representative approach to champagne. Yeah. However, zoning in, you're starting to get a little bit more personal with champagne now and sort of really differentiating between the areas that you'll be into or not, as the case may be. Oh, but just do some research, you yeah. know, as we call it, Friday night research. Yeah. Do some exploration. These are two great houses. We really adore both of these houses. Mm. Um, they're remarkably different. Put them one after the other, should you wish. Um, but enjoy them nonetheless. I think both wines would be suitable with food or aperitif style, so choice is yours. And this year we have the pleasure of visiting both houses in our champagne tour, so uh, stay tuned. We'll be... Uh, giving you some feedback when we see them. We will. See you next month. See you next month.